As mom to Ben Platt's troubled teen in Dear Evan Hansen, Rachel Bay Jones is delivering one of the most acclaimed performances of the Broadway season. And just a few years back, she had a similar triumph in the Broadway revival of Pippin, adding hilarious layers to the traditionally simple ingenue role of Catherine. Although she's clearly on a roll, things haven't always been so easy for Jones, who was absent from the Broadway scene for 20 years after first making a splash as a teen. It was scary, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, I was 19, nobody could touch me. I was 19, right. I'm invincible, right. you know? So right. it was. It was pretty great. I look back on that time and think, oh my God, I would hate it if my kid ever did that. But they, you know, my <laughs> parents were like, go, go. Right. Find out about her incredible journey on this week's Show People. Hi, Rachel. Hi. So happy you're here. I'm so happy to be here. You are having such a moment this season, aren't you? Do you feel like you're you're having a moment? Dervin Hansen has become such a thing. It is a thing. It's yeah. a big, beautiful thing. I'm sure you appreciate these moments. Oh my God. But yeah. you know what I mean? When you've yeah. been an actress, as long as you've been an actress, when you when you suddenly are in something like Dervin Hansen and the audiences are connecting to it and it's just sort of like the talk of the town. It really is. It, it's, I mean, and it's such an important show that that yeah. it feels right. So you've been involved in the show for a few years now, right? Yeah, I think and almost I three or a little uh, over three. Okay. Mm -hmm. And has it changed a lot? Have Has your stuff changed a lot in the show, like since from early on, or was that sort of like set? It has, it, you know, in, in, in some small ways, in some large ways. You know, mm -hmm. new songs have been added, things have been taken away. Um, mm -hmm. Her character has become refined in different ways, mm -hmm. and that's been an interesting journey. Yeah. <laughs> in some ways more like me, in some ways. Is there a lot of Rachel and Heidi, Heidi Hansen, yes. Dar Evan Hansen's mom? Yes. Such a great character. In a lot of ways, the heart of the show. I mean, there's a lot of hearts, I guess, in the, that yeah, show. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of hearts. That song in, in the second act is like the one of the most emotional things I can remember seeing on stage in a very long time. It's an incredible moment. Yeah. You and Ben Platt. And yeah. like amazing chemistry. Did you know Ben at all before you stepped into a rehearsal for this show? No, we had um, Ben and I and Jennifer Laura Thompson and Michael Park, yeah. who play the other parents, were all involved in the very first okay. table read right. of the script. I think right. the f I think it was the first time it had ever been read out loud by actors, uh -huh. and so we'd been invited to participate in the Pasek Paul Levinson Untitled Musical, and okay. we showed up. And Ben had learned a few of the songs mm -hmm. and the were sung by Benj and Justin, the composers, and we all opened the book and started reading it cold and flipped the pages to find out what we were wow. going to say okay, next. So that you, yeah, you read so it in that moment. You in that like, moment, okay. no, wow, no cool. prep, you know, yeah. and we were, you know, desperate to find out what happened, and you know, it was really fascinating, yeah. and and also to hold on tight and never let me go. Mm -hmm. And you had a history with Pasek and Paul, with Benj, yeah. with Oscar winners, Oscar winners. Benj Pasek <laughs> so and Justin great. Paul. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny because you know they have been up and coming writers for a w long time now, yeah. for many years, and they've had all these shows, yeah. and they've slowly been sort of rising, and now they've risen. When you've stepped into a room for a new Passing and Paul musical, it wasn't necessarily like stepping into the next, you know, Broadway smash. Now it'll be like, well, the next Passing and Paul musical will be right, the, right. a thing, right, you know a what thing. I mean? But I think we've all been waiting for, yeah, exactly. for this we've moment seen, for them, because moments. they're amazing. Right. And yeah, I had been involved with the pre-Broadway tour of their Christmas Story right. musical, right. and fallen in love with them really right. hard then. You and put the mom in that. Yes, the I mom. did, yes. Okay. And um, have been dying for a chance to work with them again, obviously, and there's been a lot of you know near misses. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I was excited to work with the boys again and see what they had to come up with, but right. it was also kind of an all-star lineup. You know, Stacey Mindich was producing, and Michael right. Greif was the director, right. and it was like, this was a cool kids kind of thing, and yeah. I felt really, really glad to be a part of it, yeah. and really happy that I've stayed a part of it. So, I mean, you are a mom, right. first of all. Mm -hmm. uh, is that sort of an important element to playing this role? I mean, did you know it's what I mean? It's huge, and she's a, she's a single mom, right. working hard, not very successful yeah. at anything other than just survival, mm -hmm. you know, and needing her kid to be okay. Needing yeah. everything to be okay so that we can keep going. You know, it's a doggy paddling way of living your life. Yeah. And I completely connect to that. Yeah. <laughs> I had separated from my daughter's father when she was young okay. and had, you know, and I've been doing a lot of that myself. I've uh -huh. been with my partner for a long time now, but it's been, 
you know, the single mom life and the single mom, um, the single parent relationship mm -hmm. is with your child is something that I know really well and yeah. is its own unique thing. I was really, really happy to get to explore a character that is so unique and universal at the same mm -hmm. time and also flawed and human mm -hmm. and and real, you know? It was a great process, you know, continuing to keep yeah. that alive and those flaws very present in who she is. And your daughter is now how old? She'll be 14 next she, month. She is the mm -hmm. target audience for this show, I feel. Well, I mean, yeah. like, there are a lot of... Fa yeah, and that and middle-aged women, you know, I think. <laughs> <laughs> like, I see me up there. Is yeah, she, well, I think a lot of people are. Is she that. a fan of the show? She is, though, you know, the last, incar this Broadway incarnation, she has not come back since okay. our opening night. I think she's a little tired of seeing mom, you know, <laughs> get emotional or be, uh -huh. you know, not, not that I'm crazy yeah. at home yeah, or yeah, anything, yeah. but, you know, she just doesn't want to come to the theater and live through that all the time. You know? But she must be thrilled to see, I mean, like, moms on the billboard charts. Mom. I mean, this is like, it, you know what I mean? This show, it's really and the celebrities really that are coming that. to this show. I yeah, mean, she asks me almost every day who came to the show, who came to the show, did yeah. you get a picture? She has no, she doesn't care about the people that I care about, you know, but <laughs> she's really happy when. So who was know. like somebody that, that you got to meet that was really cool that she was impressed by? You know, she was actually really impressed when I met Carol Burnett because I oh. have, you know, I have made her watch and not well, forcefully yeah. but made her watch this legend you know you are a good so. mom you taught you taught about carol burnett that's I'm important i yeah, feel like hello. my work that's is like done here required I'm viewing done. i feel like you're doing the show and now there's this whole third act happening which is celebrities coming back <sighs> i'm sure hugging people <clears throat> at the stage door is a part it's of a it big and deal, yeah. i mean it's like mm -hmm. there, there's this whole other almost responsibility right it to, does to doing the show way. it's not just like doing a show out of town somewhere and then at the end, you know, you bow and then you, you go, go home. home and and which is a beautiful thing, you know, that right. work a day actor world, but this does very much seem like it's the life of Dear Evan Hansen right now. And, and it is, there's a, a lot of people are responding so deeply to it mm -hmm. that it does, and I do too. So when the show is over, it's kind of a wonderful thing to go outside the stage door and see the fans and hug the moms. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, there's something really beautiful about that mm -hmm. because we all look at each other with the same kind of stunned, we've just lived through something real. Mm -hmm feeling mm -hmm. you know and and it's nice to make that personal connection yeah. in some way I'm sure the mom I'm sure you get a lot of mom stories too I'm sure like people tell you their story and yeah yeah it's really yeah it feels like that's an important part of the sharing for mm -hmm. a lot of people yeah are you rocking out to the cast album on your iPhone are you are you listening to it's it so good I mean like Isn't yeah it's it good? so good Every, it's its own whole nother thing it's yeah. just beautiful yeah. yeah I feel like you're surrounded by Millennials because first of all they love the show yeah and they're in the show with you. Yeah. I mean, like, wh what, are, what are you learning about working with all these millennials? Because, you know, I think we're about the same age, yeah. and it's definitely a very different generation. It really is. What, do you feel, like, super down with them now? And uh, <laughs> are you learning things from millennials? Or I'm trying, you know. Trying? I'm, you know, it's funny, because the thing that I think about the most yeah. is, I was a teenager, I think, right. and my own mother had said to me, you know, it's so funny. I feel, you know, I, I'm, I'm this middle-aged woman, but inside I still feel like a 16-year-old girl. <laughs> And I remember looking at her like, uh. oh, my God, that is so pathetic. <laughs> like, you know, mm, sorry, Mom. And now here That's I you? am. I'm the same. Because I, I forget. I forget that I'm a middle-aged woman right. when I'm talking to my friends who right. are in the show. And then right. there's some yeah. point of reference that happens in every conversation yeah. that I cannot participate <laughs> in. And I think you're, I think you're down with the millennials. I think the millennials are um, loving you. Okay, we're going to take a little quick break, okay. and then we're going to come back in. I want to talk about your teenage years. Uh -oh. We'll be right back. <laughs> and we're back with Rachel Bay Jones of Dear Evan Hansen, the show everybody's dying to see. And you should, you should be Dynasty, because it's a great show. I don't know much about you, and, and I've been doing my research, and, and I'm fascinated, I have so many questions. Okay. So can we like <laughs> dig into this a little bit? Okay. Okay, so <laughs> first of all, you grew up in Florida mostly. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. In uh, Boca Raton. Yes. But you like to be very clear that you were not, not in the, the, maybe the really rich part of Boca Raton. Is that correct? Yeah, it was, my dad was kind of a renegade in his own mind, you know, in okay. his own way. And he, um, they were just developing the west part of Boca okay. Raton, which was either in or very close to the Florida Everglades. Okay. And um, so they were developing a new um, community that had been cattle grazing land up until that point. Okay. And, and dad went out there and found, you know, 
that you could get a couple acres of land and build your house the way that you wanted to build it. Oh, and, okay. you know, and so he did that. And, um, but it was a swamp. Fought the... Or it was near the swamp. It was <laughs> near the swamp, okay. <laughs> so he, like... It was, it was, they had cut canals all through the, you know, the thing. And, and, but our, literally our backyard was a canal and then the Everglades. The wow. Loxahatchee Swamp was literally in my backyard. And so the first year that everybody moved in, everybody's dogs got eaten by alligators. I mean, it was really That intense. is so upsetting. I know you're <laughs> so a dog owner. I, I, I did not have Instagram. a dog at that moment, thank oh. God, because, yeah, we had a... That's horrible. It was really horrible. And so and you so saw alligators. But yeah, you would see them? I would see them. My little brother would, you know, like come home with baby water moccasin snakes, you know, and he was, you <laughs> know, it was okay. one of those. It was, <laughs> but it was, you know, it was, it was the 80s. It was like we were running around barefoot right. and, you know, riding our bikes all over the place. And right. we just had ultimate freedom. Our parents just had no idea where we were or what we were doing. And that's, there were alligators in, in our neighborhood. Yeah, it's it was like Stranger just, Things. It was, it, yeah. it was like it, that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. it was like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was so. But then we would, just, you know, drive a few miles east, and it was the mall, and a few more miles, and then it was Boca Raton Beach Club. So right. it was just a very interesting hodgepodge. Right. And your parents were actors, Shakespearean yes. actors. Yes, like they to had say. met at the Stratford we, Shakespeare Festival. Yeah. They, when you say yeah. Shakespearean yeah. actors, it sounds so important. They and were, and they, but they were. They were loved. they grand in any way. Um, my mother's very grand. Okay. My father is very down to earth. My okay. my mother is a diva in all senses of the word. But they were both from that 60s actor okay, right. mentality, right. which was how important the theater was yes. and how important acting was yes. and drama, you know, the so drama, it, was, yes. it was an upbringing. So yeah. like, what does your mom think of like your career now? She, they could not be happier. Yeah. They're just very, very happy about everything. And she's not, they live on Maui now, so it's oh a little bit God, more of amazing. a track to come photo, here. I saw your photos in Hawaii. They're there, they're yeah, in Maui. Yeah, that's where I go that's to visit amazing. mom and dad and my brother. Wow, and I would visit my parents so often. I want to. <laughs> 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 it makes it really easy to go home. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So I saw Meet Me in St. Louis. Meet Me in St. Louis. Did, um, yeah, yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. 1989, uh -huh. uh, it opened. That was actually one of my favorite Broadway seasons. The 1989-90 Broadway season, that was a good because one. a lot of my, a lot of great musicals. Grand Hotel. It was Grand Hotel, City of Angels, yeah. Meet Me in St. Louis, Aspects of Love. That was like the best right, musical right. race. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. I actually went to the Tonys that year. Did you perform at the Tonys? Yeah, I did. I yeah. was there. I was at the Lundfontein Theater. Oh my god. I was. I remember yeah. you. I remember you were fabulous in the ensemble. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was uh, an incredible season on Broadway, yeah. and that that was a big musical. It was at the Gershwin. It was huge. There was an actual trolley on stage. There I was remember. a big trolley. There was a I huge. Remember a banjo cast. number. Was there a banjo? Like there was a banjo <laughs> number with hardly any banjos. <laughs> we had incredible costumes. I mean, it was yeah. just gorgeous. Yes. It was so gorgeous. It was a, and such for a that, throwback, big, classic, huge, like yeah. an MGM movie. Fountains, fireworks. Yeah. I mean, it was <laughs> off the charts amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you end up in there? That was your Broadway debut. It was. You left high school to do it? I didn't leave high school to do it. I okay. had just, I had left high school to do a play um, okay. in Florida with Mark Kudish, actually. Oh. Right? A production of Picnic. Uh, oh really? Um, yeah. That's amazing. And, I didn't know um, that. But yeah, I had moved to New York, and the, and my I had an agent in Miami who introduced me to an agent here in New York. Mm -hmm. Gave me you know information, and I called, and she said, okay, great, come on in. And I came on in, and the agent said, great, I'll work with you, and I I have this you know audition for you for a Broadway musical. Wow. And I said, great, and I went and I auditioned for I auditioned for the lead. I did not get it, okay. but I did get to understand study her and it was right. a, it was a lengthy audition process so you sang the boy next door sang audition. the boy next door yeah. sang you know all the, all the all the good hits were your parents supportive of that the fact that you Very. yeah okay you they know, were like she she ha she has what we have and she's going to go do this and yeah. be an actress they were very excited and still are for me to be a, an actor so you were on Broadway, I was on Broadway. Uh, like a teen on Broadway. Did, did you feel like you were part of the Broadway community right away, or were you? What was that? What was that time like? Were you, was the cast like hanging out at night? And All like, the time. It, it okay. was, you know, it was a, it was a party. It was it a was. great party with a lot of young people. It was a really great time in New York. It was kind of down and dirty Broadway community. I right. mean, it was 1989 into 90, yeah. and. Um, you know, I lived in Hell's Kitchen. It was. It, it was, was still kind of scary, though. It was scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I was nineteen. Nobody could touch me. I was nineteen. Right. I'm invincible. Right. You know, so right. it was. It was pretty great. I look back on that time and think, oh my God, I would hate it if my kid ever did that. But they, you know, <laughs> my parents were like, go, go. Right. It's better than alligators. Right. And then. <laughs> 
the show ran what, like seven or eight months? It ran, I think, eight or nine. Okay, eight yeah. or nine months. Yeah. Um, and then Good when it time. closed, were you devastated, or were you like freaking out, or were you just kind of like, let's see what happens. Let's what what comes next. Like, like I'm curious about your path. Yeah. I'm curious about your path from there to Pippin. It's been a lot. <laughs> you know, it's I mean, been a lot. Yeah, it's been a lot. I, I mean, I didn't. I I wasn't surprised when it closed. I think we all were. Yeah. It wasn't a huge critical hit right. by any means. Right. And and I think it was so expensive that it didn't ever right. really make any the money. Alone. So yeah. So we were all kind of you know waiting for it to close because we right. just thought yeah. you know this can't this can't they can't keep up with this. Right. Um, so did that I you know I did another I think like another couple of shows and then I I did uh, the national tour uh, tour of um, Grand yeah, Hotel, Grand Hotel yeah. and that was a really wonderful experience and I came back to New York and was auditioning and I just like I you know the thing about me Paul is that my parents had been actors acting was like religion it was church it okay. was everything and I had I was a shy kid who never really you know, I, I wanted to be an actor because I was good at it and it was what we did, okay. but I always was surprised that that was now what I did for a living, that okay. this was now who I was, uh -huh. was an actor. You were away from Broadway for a long time. Yeah. Were you um, pursuing acting that entire time? No, I left New York. Okay, you I left actually New York. Left. I moved go? to North Carolina for okay. a while and I would do, I've always done theater right. in places. Yeah. So I lived in North Carolina, I lived in Austin, Texas, I lived in Maui, I had my daughter in Maui, I, you know, wow. and in between I would come back to New York and because it keeps sort of calling you back, you know, this siren Did you always have an agent here? I had an agent here who was, you know, one of the early agents and then, okay. you know, one of my great old agents died and then, right. you know, I didn't have an agent. It was one of those, you know. Right, right. It's not until, not until I'd had my daughter mm -hmm. and I sort of grew up a little bit mm -hmm. and I thought, you know, now it's time to really reckon with this, to really see what this can be without right. fear. And I had struggled a lot with um, sort of audition anxiety and panic. I would get in the room and I just did not want to be there. And so the whole time wow. I would just be thinking, I got to get out of here. I, I just got to get out of here, you know? Never on stage, hmm. but, but audition rooms were really, really scary for me for a long time. So Diane Paulus came into your life, right? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what happened, right? Kinda. You went in for hair. Yeah. But hair was on you, we were a replacement in hair. Yeah. So how did that happen? Like, how did you go from what you're describing to that? There were a couple of years after I had moved back to New York okay. where I was just really just pushing, pushing, pushing to try to get so anything. So you were just determined, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this full throttle again. I just got to try. I just yeah. got to do one last shot at this, uh -huh. you know? I got to conquer this thing, yeah. this, this thing that's right. hanging over my head. And so I would keep auditioning. I didn't have an agent. I, you know, at that point, I just, I was nowhere. You know, I was a mom and I would do some industrials and I'd make money mm -hmm. doing theater here and there. And um, my partner, Benham Foster, who's yeah. an actor, mm -hmm. kept trying to get his agent to, you know, do anything with me because I had no agent. And he's like, you gotta, you know, you gotta. And we heard that Hare was holding auditions okay. for replacement. And he called his agent and he said, please, just 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 submit Rachel. Just submit her. Please just Is this try. this to replace Megan Lawrence? It was to replace Megan yes. Lawrence. Okay, yeah. Right. yeah. And um, so he said, all right, okay, you know, yeah, and I'll work with Rachel and I'll and I'll submit you for this hair mm. thing. And I went and it was at the public theater and we got to just, you know, be who we were. And um, Diane is so free and yeah. wonderful in that way. And so the room was really comfortable. I, mm -hmm. at that point, had sort of given up any expectation that anything would ever happen for me. And as a matter of fact, um, months before, I had been in the car listening to Hair, Hair Came on the radio. Uh -huh. And I actually, like, started tearing up because I thought, and I said to my partner, Benham, I said, I said, I'll, you know, he said, what's the matter? I was like, I'll never do Hair. I'll oh, never wow. do hair. It's, you know, I'm too old. My time, my time has passed. Wow. I'll never do it. And there, you know, life just opened a little door. And it was All right, really we, have to, we have to take a break, but I want to hear more because you did hair. Yeah. And it was exciting on <laughs> it was Broadway. Great, yeah. We'll be right back. We're back with Rachel Bay Jones. Okay, so we're digging into the past here a little bit. Okay. So as you said, you were sort of like not acting aggressive. You know, you weren't really pursuing it. Right. Full out. And then you had a moment in the car with hair. Yeah. First of all, hair was obviously, like you said, it was just this very welcoming spirit. And the, the whole company was very 
yeah. in line with all the philosophy of it. Mm -hmm. And Diane's method, it almost sounds like, it seems like the perfect storm of what you needed to sort of get you yeah. out of whatever you were going through. Is that It was accurate? a really loving, gentle, perfect way for yeah. me to re-enter something that had terrified me uh -huh. and I'd struggled with for so many reasons. And yet here was something where th there was this director who was not only allowing me to be who I was, but celebrating it, yeah. allowing me to be an artist, not just fill a slot, which mm -hmm. I think is a lot of actors get into this thing of like, I'm supposed to be this way, I'm right. supposed to be this way, and it becomes like a new surrender. Right. It you know really closes right. you off. It was a great new launching pad for mm -hmm. me and a really great shift. What was it like the first time you stepped back on a Broadway stage? Is that was that emotional for you? Hugely. Yeah. And it was at the top of you know Aquarius, right. you know, where yeah. this beautiful you know scrim rises and we're all hippies and I'm standing on an old truck with a full <laughs> awesome band right, right. behind me and I get right. to run down to the audience and say, Yay! I'm happy you're here. You know, <laughs> it was an incredible <laughs> moment. Amazing. So Diane announced that she was doing Pippin, mm -hmm. and I was, it was exciting because I was like, wow, what is, she, what is this going to be? What's this vision of Pippin? And I always thought of Pippin as this very dusty show that didn't work anymore, honestly. Uh -huh. I, that, that was just my experience from it. And, and so she thought of you for Catherine, right? You're not the obvious choice no, for Catherine. No, not at all. And I think they've been, you know, casting for a while, and I had spoken with Nadia, the musical director, uh -huh. about something completely different. And she said, you should come in for this. And I was like, no way, you're kidding me? You know, I'm a woman who's like, I'm right. a certain age. And she, and this was a part that's usually played by it's women in their 20s. a classic ingenue, yeah. kind of dull. In the, in the way that it had been conceived before, right. she was, her loveliness and her perfection and right. her simplicity were what the part was, that was about. Her thing. Right. And so when Diane asked me to come in and give my take on it, mm -hmm. which would ne by necessity have to be completely different because here I am, a 40 year old woman, right. you know, trying to figure out what to do do with this part, right. I could really stretch, you know, because ultimately she's an actor playing Catherine. This role mm -hmm. is a person who's been right. involved with this troupe right. for a long time, right. playing the role of Catherine. Right. Not for a long time, she's been involved in playing the role of Catherine. Yeah. So I made it seem like she's been playing it for a very <laughs> long time, you know, right. since she was an ingenue, she has been playing this part. And so it allowed all of the, my feelings about theater, about yeah. all of the, you know, and, and anytime you have, you know, some kind of stretch like that, comedy is naturally born out of it. Right. So it really was fun to play around with that. Are you um, excited, nervous? How are you feeling about award season? So award season's I, coming I up. This like is, it's a weird I, time on Broadway because you've been weird, doing the show yeah. and it's been going great and people love it. Yes. And now this stuff is happening. And people are already whole, saying things. Right. It's a whole other thing. So I'm kind of trying. It's hard. It's hard not to get your ego caught up in that. Yeah. You know. And for me, ego is always a negative thing. <laughs> you know. It's <laughs> always like not worthy, not worthy. <laughs> you know. That always pops up. Right. So I'm trying to just kind of keep it a little bit at uh -huh. arm's length and remember the work that I'm doing and remember why I'm doing right. it and, and also a person who doesn't really want people to look at them. Right. You know, it's it's not the best. It's it's an exciting time but not my favorite time. You do nice with the like red carpet stuff and the you look gorgeous on opening night. Thank I mean, you. Yeah, I'm trying you like, to be are you, better are you enjoying all it. that stuff? Do you like dressing up? And I'm, I'm trying to enjoy that. My yeah. go-to is, is scruffy denim and no makeup okay. and you know the so the team I've got a team of people saying you just can't do that anymore Rachel you gotta, <laughs> gotta grow up a little bit. <laughs> so what's like the the dream scenario for where your career goes from here? I mean, being a parent and wanting to take care of my child financially, financial right. considerations are always a big yeah. deal. I think I've been really, really incredibly lucky in the last five, six, seven years yeah. that the projects that have come to me, whether or not they were lucrative, have all been really interesting mm -hmm. artistically. Mm -hmm. And so I would love for that to continue. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, you can never say, I don't have dream roles, I don't, you know, right. it's it's always to create something new and right. that's exciting. A lot of young people are coming to the show yeah. and, and they're looking to you and to the whole cast and they want to have a connection with you guys and they, they feel such a connection to this show. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure a lot of young performers say to you like, how can I be you? What, what should I do? Like, what do you <laughs> tell these people? Well, you know, there's no prescription, but right. the, w the things that I've been able to tell myself over and over again and remind myself 
myself are to be honest, to be honest, know, to know who you are yeah. and to remember that that's valid and to be honest when you're telling a story and remember that you're an artist. Remember that you are an artist, you're a performing artist and there's a reason why we call ourselves that is because your unique vision is cannot be replicated right. and that's what people want to see and right. that messy is okay. Right. Messy is okay Messi's for the okay. most part. Awesome. That's what I try to tell I mean, myself. That's great advice. <laughs> I hope it is. I love your dogs by the way. Those dogs are, <laughs> what are their dogs names? They're Pigeon and Vixen. <laughs> English setters. Yeah. <laughs> Will you please give them a kiss for me? Yes, I love them. You could have brought them. them. Just next time you could bring your I dogs. I saw that, that you've had dogs yeah, in here dogs before. Here. It would have been a little chaotic with them. <laughs> They're a little big. Thank you but so much for coming thanks, by. Paul, it's been such a, a treat to talk to you and I'm so thrilled to to see this all happening for you thanks. and uh, and Damn it, you you like deserve it, you know? When you hear a story <laughs> like it's like it's 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 great. We all do. Yeah, we all absolutely. Deserve it, yeah. So everyone, uh, you have to get to the music box theater to see Dervin Hansen. If you can get a ticket, you can get a ticket, but you might have to wait, and it's worth the wait. Yeah. Uh, and Rachel Bay Jones, it's fabulous, and thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.